Amen. 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 I am delighted to be here today. It's um, really a moving time because we know, Bilston, that if it wasn't for God, it would have been impossible. But I also want to really thank your pastor for giving me the freedom. And um, I'm saying this publicly because not many of my colleagues would do that. When I, when this building came, he said to me, Pastor, you go ahead and do what it is best to be done. By that I meant I had to negotiate. And I think the Lord has given me some sense on that. Because what they wanted for here would be I, through God's power, spoke them. And even when they said, no, I'm not going any further, I said in the text, take it. Are we just serve the song of yours? But God was leading. Amen. And they decided that. And I want you to know this. I was just sharing with Pastor a while ago. I'm responsible for building development in this conference. And not many churches can buy a church cash. Amen. Just in case, I want you to take it as a as, as something good. You, on, on, on whatever date you're looking on opening this church, I just said to your pastor, you don't have to open this church, you must only take this church. It's cash you are paid for. It. You want nothing on this church. So, not many churches. I've just come from an auction just, um, on Thursday, and they can't dedicate their church because they have to borrow money to buy it, if you follow me. You can dedicate your church to the glory of God. So you, you don't even just have to have an opening, you, can, you, you just have dedication and opening. Because this church, nobody can come and take that key from you. No bank. Nowhere. It's all you. And I say thanks be to God. Amen. Sister dear, you know how your, 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 your vision has always been a scarlet. And there are those who came after. It's not good when you just people almost pushing you out. When I see each week, Florence Donald in the late part, they had to every morning come and set up. You think it's easy? Put out chairs and you name it. That, for me, is not right. And I always say, my wife will tell you, my vision is that every church owns their own church. And I'll go all out for that. Because when you have your own place, nobody can come and destroy you. <coughs> and I want to say thanks be to God. And all of you, you have sacrificed, you have put your hands deep in your heart. And I say, let me share with you, just before I go to the message. We built a church over there in Birmingham about the largest church, big hall. One of the things which I ask the members to do, and I'm serious on this, there were a lot of the members who had money and they placed it in a will so that the church could have a to their death. And I spoke with them, I said to them, why not you just give it now, when you can see 
and they did. A number of them went back to the solicitors and took out what they said the church would have gotten, gave it so that the church could be complete. It makes sense to me. It makes a lot of sense to me. Some of you have heard me preach it. There's nothing will be new with the children. No, you give them it now. Give them now. Spend it on them now while your eyes are open. Because we can't take anything away from this earth. Amen? So I'm, I'm plugging the power plan. Because you need something more worth it. Pastor said it, when we bought this place, it wasn't about this building. It was about the land. Understand this, that you are in city center. You realize that? I know you might say, Bill Sons are tall. But you think it's going to remain at all all the time? I, I'm prophesying. Billston is going to be a little city. And this land is going to work. Lord. And one of the reasons we got it so reasonable is that there's a covenant on it. So later on, if you want to lift the covenant, you can lift it. And you can get triple the price for it if you want. But don't you believe you're here for a reason? Yes. Come talk to me. Yes. Don't you believe you're here for a purpose? Yes. So we're not going anywhere. You're going to stay here. And we are going to, as Donald said, we are going to go out into this community and we are going to make a mark. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. We are going to make a mark. And so, you have seen on the bulletin, we made it. That's the title of the message. We made it. What have we made? <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9 says, We are troubled. On every side, yet not distressed, we are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10, Paul says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Amen. Father in heaven, make these words alive in our experience today. In Jesus' name. Amen. The familiar expression, we made it, is a statement that implies achievement in the midst of overwhelming odds. You can relate to that. It is a proclamation of accomplishment for someone who has everything stacked up against them. It's a way of saying that in spite of the length of the journey, Sister dear, in spite of the roughness of the road and in spite of the many stumbling blocks which have been thrown in my way, we can say we have overcome and we have reached our goal. What do you say? Amen. Now, we must note that the statement we made it does not refer to an ultimate goal, nor does it refer to a permanent victory. You see, as long as we are citizens of this world, as long as we are housed in these mortal bodies, every achievement is temporary. And every victory is short-lived. The celebration only lasts for a while. And it, in many instances, it is only the prelude to another struggle. <coughs> because you heard what Pastor say, you are here now, there's another struggle to get something to serve the community. But yet, in the words of the songwriter, we are encouraged that each victory will help you, some other to win. So even though the expression we make it isn't permanent for mortal beings, it contains an element of encouragement which says to us that the same grace which brought us Thus far on our journey, are you hearing me today, can be trusted to lead us all the way home. Amen. It must also be noted that there is a far vast difference 
between saying we made it and saying we got it made. Mm -hmm. You see, we got it made is an expression of self-sufficiency and arrogance. While we made it is an expression of humble jubilation. Uh, we, we have got it made is a statement of overconfidence and show off. Because you know we like to show off sometimes. <laughs> While we made it is an expression of joy and relief. You see, when a person says we have got it made, he isn't going any further. He acknowledges that he is already at the top. And when you are at the top, there is only one way to go. And that's that. When a person says we have got it made for all practical purposes, he is dead in his era of achievement. There are no more milestones, no more achievements, no more improvements, and no more accomplishments. You see, the, the, the Israelites who lived during the days of the prophet, Amos, uh, felt that because of their strategic location, because of their economic prosperity and their military might, they had it made. But this self sufficient confidence was shattered by the words of Amos in, chapter, in Amos chapter 6, verse 1, when he said, Walk to them that are ease in Zion and trust in the mountain of Samaria. Belshazzar, he felt that he had it made one day. He got so sure that he took the gold and silver vessels which had been in the temple of at Jerusalem and used them for one of his elaborate drinking parties. But when the festivities got into high gear, he and his guests were frightened out of their clothes and out of their senses when they saw the hand from nowhere writing on the wall. The rich fool spoke of in Luke chapter 4. He thought that he had it made when he tore down his small barns, built larger ones, and stole away all of his surplus grain. He was so confident that he said, So thou hast much goods laid up many years. Take thy knees, eat, drink, and be merry. But we all know that shortly after reciting that selfish and conceited thought, God said to him, Thou fool, this night, thy soul shall be required of thee. So we should be careful about saying that we have it made. Nobody has it made until you and I crosses over Chile Jordan and set our foot in the promised land. What do you say? Yes. But the statement we made it is just a brief reflection of a journey over some territory that has been covered. Are you hear me? It's a celebration of a victory over adverse circumstances, however temporary. Now let me give you a few examples of a person who's justified in, in, in saying we made it. You see, when a parent worked hard and made great sacrifice to educate their children, and when they attend a graduation exercise and they see their child walk across the stage and receive their degree or their diploma or whatever, they can say, I mean, I hear me. When a man struggles for many years trying to pay for their home or their houses, both male and female, husband and wife, sometimes it's a man alone, sometimes it's a wife alone. When they finish paying for that home, and when they find, I'm a, as a matter of fact, when, when you make the final payment, you can say, Hallelujah! Amen. We made it. When a widowed mother or any mother who has had to rear a child without a man or without a husband and has maintained her decency and has kept high moral standards despite the many temptations to do otherwise. Seize her child, receive high honor, or be appointed to some prestigious position. She can say, Thank God, we made it. When loyal and dedicated church members have achieved success in some ministry or some project that others predicted would fail, they can say, Praise the Lord, we made it. 
Uh, pastor, this is for us. When a pastor reflect upon his years of service to a congregation and realizes that for the most part, his district has been an uphill struggle against organized opposition. And yet, he has not yielded to pressure tactics and has maintained a sense of dignity and direction. He can say hallelujah. Bless God from Zion. Thank you, Jesus. We made it. Amen. Now, as we search the pages of the Bible, we can find no better person to say I made it than the Apostle Paul. After his conversion on the Damascus Road, the rest of his life was a constant series of knockdown and recoveries. If you follow his life as a minister and, and a missionary, you will find him constantly meeting stern opposition. Always! At Lystra, he was stoned and left to die. In Philippi, he was beaten and thrown in jail. There was a conspiracy against him at Ephesus. I hear me today. And he had to be hustled out of jail at Jerusalem to escape an angry man. But after each incident, he said, Thank God I made it. And sometimes we pastors, we're not going through anything. And we're complaining. Here is a missionary, a pastor. Listen. <laughs> because we, we, we think of what? So we put one on. Look in the mirror. Well, that's how I look today. <laughs> there used to be three ways that we would, could, we would get to church. We would either run, walk, or trot. <laughs> but we made it. We knew exactly what we were going to wear. It was that fade and had me down from Big Brother. <laughs> but we made it. Many of us live in houses, and, and, and this is not about England, because everything is all nice and fancy. Many of us used to live in houses where the roof was so thick that we could lie in bed and count the stars. <laughs> but we made it. We have buckets and pans stationed on the various leaks in the roof and the rhythmic picture patter of dripping water would play a soothing lullaby <laughs> that put us to sleep. <laughs> Yet, we made it. Our parents, they didn't have a lot of money, but we made it. Some of the work that some of us came here and did. Some of us couldn't even tell anyone what we're doing. We just, what are you doing? I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> but we made it. Yes. So we can identify the Paul when he says, we are troubled on every side. We can relate to him when he says we are perplexed. And certainly, we know what it means to be persecuted and to be cast down. We, we have traveled the same road as Paul. And just like him, we can also say that we have made it what you say. But we made it only through the grace of God what you say, Trevor. Paul, you see, he, he regularly had to give up in order to go up. You don't hear me today. In fact, Paul said, uh, I die daily. Each time Paul gave up something, he moved forward and honored God. I hear me today. Uh, what Paul gave up, he gave up his health and comfort. And he, he felt hard pressed. He, he, he gave up calm and certainty. 
he felt perplexed. He gave up peace and acceptance. He was persecuted. He gave up strength and poise. He was shut down. His own, he gave up his own life. He wore the marks of Christ's death. How did Paul went up? He was never crushed. You don't hear me today. He never fell into despair. He was never forsaken. He was never destroyed. And he received the life of Jesus. What do you say? Amen. And so I want us to understand today that this is Paul's resume. This is Paul's resume, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verses 22 onwards. Are the Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labors, more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths of, of the Jews. Five times received I for the stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often. In perils waters. In perils of robbers. In perils by my own countrymen. In perils by the heathen. In perils in the city. In perils in the wilderness. In perils in the sea. In perils among false brethren. In weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness. That's all the rest of it. We have many ups and downs, but we have made it. The mountain gets a little too steep, but we made it. Sometimes our friends make us cry, but still, we made it. We have to drink from the old bitter cup, but we made it. How did we make it? I tell you, amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see too many dangers, toils and snares. I have already come to his grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. So in spite of all that is taking place in this life, there is one thing I do know. I have a savior in heaven, and that is good news for me. And he wants me and you to hang out with him in the earth, maybe. What do you say? So after all I've been through, I've, you might have been to hell and back. And you have seen some stuff and some things. But today, all of us here can say that because of Jesus, because of Jesus, we can say we have made it. Amen. And you know what? Sometimes things get so bad. You have been lied on. But today you can still have joy because of Jesus. You have been talked about, but I still have joy. You have been mistreated. You have been in the gutters, but you still have joy. Not because of you, you standing beside me, but it is because of Jesus. You have been broke. No. You mean you are broke right now. No money, nothing. So you can take everything. But you still have joy. After all I've been through. Is it just me? Is it just me? Can I see some people today who have been through as Paul have done? I want you to know that the joy that you have, this world didn't give you. And this world can't take it away. Amen. This joy you have, Obama can't give it. No, not even Cameron. The nightclub can't give you. The drug can't give you. The joy that you have, the church can't give you. 
it is only through Jesus what you say. That's why Paul said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. It makes me today want to shout because you know what's amazing? Is that Jesus loves me. Uh, you don't have to do anything for him to love you. He just loves you. What an amazing Jesus. It makes me want to lift my hands and I want to praise God because he's worthy to be praised. Do you know that some of us should have been crazy already? But we are still here. Don't you know that you should have been thrown down? Throw up your hands and surrender everything and give up. But you're still here. Some of us should have been curled up in the corner and broken down already. But we're still here. Some of us should have left this place already. We should have been six feet on. But we are still here. Amen. Some of us didn't even thought that we would have made it into this building. But hey, <laughs> we are still here. So since you're still here, you don't hear me today. And since I am still here, can't we praise God? Yeah. Amen. We can praise God. Him because the devil fought. He has won. But thank God we are still here. Amen. We made it. Amen. So I know sometimes, Pastor, you perhaps had it hard to get preachers to come to things like the preach. You won't have it now. Everybody is going to want to come and look. <laughs> too, too well. We can't treat them as they treat us. Yes, no, no. Let them come. Yes. Let them come and some of them they want to be able to teach. Yes. Some of them can't even believe that this. You see, that's how my God works. He does not want people to even know what is around the car. Because some people have tried to kill. You don't hear me today. This is year time of celebration. We have made it. And I don't want anybody to be putting their, their, their chest and say, I did it. Oh, whatever thousands I gave, I did it. No! It's by the grace of God what we say. So I say as I take my seat, praise Him. Because we have got the victory. Praise Him. Because the devil is already defeated. Praise Him. Because we have made it. Yes, we have. Praise Him. Because in a little while, you don't hear me, we are going home. Praise Him! Because He has brought it out, He has brought us through, He has brought us over. Because He said, it, everything is going to be alright, Mr. How are you hearing me today? You don't have to worry. And when you finish praising, all we need to do. There is something special awaiting us. <coughs> Just over the mountain. Are you hearing me? Yeah. This is not home. No. Everything here is only temporary. Just over the mountain. You don't hear me today. Is the promised land lies my holy city built not by man hand but by God's hand as the weary puts them gains the mountain? We can view our homeland of eternal rest in the roles of the prophets. We have long been told. Of the wondrous city with its streets of gold, no blue carpet, now in raptured vision, we can see there with its walls of jasper and its mansion there. Hear this 
Those who enter the city are the faithful few who keep God's commandments. Faith of Jesus too. They will lift our voices through the endless day in sweet songs of gladness and in songs of praise. And so I say, my brothers, my sisters, will you meet us there in the land of sunshine where there be no tear, no Jamaica? <laughs> Accept our God's message and to Him be true. And when Jesus comes, praise God, He will call for you. And the caller says, We are near at home. We are near at home. See the splendor gleaming from the tombs afar. See the glory streaming through the gates of John. There will soon be enter. Never more to roam. Hear the angels singing. We are never in home. We are never in home. As I, as I see that door open, and, 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 and Sister Dear is, is making her, her entrance, that's the view when we get to the pearly gate. My Jesus will say, Enter. Yeah. Because that's home. Are you going to stand with me? As we sing this song, we are in the room.